everyone. Uh, today we're here with DTM driver Joel Erickson. We're going to speak about your career a little bit and uh, yeah, hopefully can give you some advice about how to, to drive a car properly. So first off, uh, growing up, did you have an idol getting into motorsport? Is there anyone that you looked up to as like a, a hero? Uh, yeah, I have always been looking up to Kimi Raikkonen, actually the Formula One driver. Um, I always liked his style, uh, like the Iceman style. And um, I'm actually I'm working in the same way as him, so it feels quite natural what we are doing, both of us. So um, yeah, I've always been yeah, looking up to him and followed him for yeah. his career when I, since I was really small. So yeah, I have to say it's one of my idols. Have you ever met him? In, like, uh, I've not teams? really met him, but uh, I saw him like in the paddocks and stuff like this. Uh, but I'm, I didn't, didn't uh, no. really no. met him. So. Um, my next question was, then how did you sort of going into go-karts? Did you have the backing of your family? Were they sort of supportive of you or they thought that's a bit dangerous sort of thing? Uh, actually, we, we do not have any motorsport history in our family. Uh, the same with the, with, the, with the name. We don't have any history yeah. in motorsport at all. Uh, everything started out with um, I was six years old and my father had a big uh, big transport company so uh, him and his friends was uh, buying buying some some go karts and playing around at the garden and then yeah then I also got one when I was really small and then yeah started off from there you know we we liked it really much and we, we had had a lot of fun yeah. so we just continued and then we started to to compete and then yeah you know then the career starts yes. oh, yeah. so did you find that step from go kart into cars quite a big one because obviously go karts quite small yeah, yeah yeah it was the biggest actually it's the biggest step uh, in in the whole career going from uh, from karts to to formula cars or single seaters um, it was actually quite difficult in the beginning because, as you mentioned before, the, the car is much, much bigger, and uh, yeah, everything is much bigger, you know, everything around as well. So it's a completely different world. So um, yeah, for sure, it's a really big step. Do you find it hard to sort of make a name for yourself in karting and into cars as well? Because there are so many people that want to be a race driver but not the yeah, main to make it. Yeah, I mean, the how should I say or explain it? I mean, my brother is is uh, seven years older than me, and he also started. He actually started quite late. Um, he started when he was 14 years old in, in karting and I was seven years old. Uh, so he started out quite late, but then he went into Formula Formula car racing when he was around 20. And then I was still still at that age, you know, when you were running, when competing in karting. Um, and we found out that like you really need a lot of money when you're coming into the, the single seater world. Uh, so we just decided to, to keep the um, Keep the racing at the like the national level, so we stayed just racing in Sweden and in, in karting. Uh, so we sa like saving saved all the money until we went into Formula car racing, and then just yes, spending the money on testing instead because we know that we're gonna need a lot of money when we're coming at that point. Um, so it was quite hard to make a, make my name big before I made a step uh, because yeah, and, uh, honestly we only only raced in Sweden so. And you know, many many other drivers were racing in Italy and stuff like this, and European champions, and you know, so it was quite hard for me in the beginning. But then immediately, everything was working quite quick and quite good in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, actually, the it went really quick, if I have to <laughs> be honest. Uh, and then I made my name quite quickly mm -hmm. as well in uh, in single seater world. So, so yeah. my next question was about Formula Three because it's such a competitive series. How have you? How did you find that? Because I guess there's maybe 25 people going into a race weekend that could win a race. Yeah, I mean, as my brother is seven years older than me, uh, he already did all the steps for his career. So I was kind of uh, looking at his mistakes and, you know, I didn't know, I didn't need to, to do to that mistakes he did in his career. Him, yeah, I, exactly. Basically, I learned from him, you know. Um, so we already knew that everything is starting in like Formula 4. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we decided to go straight into Formula 3. Um, and I have to say, Formula Three was uh, was really tough. Mm. I have to say, um, especially it's yeah for sure it's one of the toughest championship in the world at the moment. Um, so it was difficult, but uh, actually everything worked out quite well. Uh, yeah, second last year was was okay. Uh, I wanted to win the championship, but uh, we had a we were struggling a bit in the middle of the season, so we lost too many points. But yeah, enough enough speaking about that. I finished second. It's okay. Uh, but um, yeah, I definitely wanted more, but definitely, it's yeah. it's okay. <laughs> is that maybe the standout career moment so far, finishing second in F3, or did you have some moments in karting which you? Uh, I was I was Swedish champion a few times as well. Um, but I mean the the highlight of my career, I have to say, is for sure the, the second place in the championship last year in the European. 
Um, but I also won the, the Masters of F3 2016 in Sanford, which is really, really big, big and race, huge. Yeah. Yeah. So it feels quite good as well. <laughs> um, but then I also had a pole position in Macau last year, which was uh, really, really nice because it was like a comeback for me because during the, the season we were struggling a lot in the middle of the season. And then to like the only goal for me was to, to go to Macau and just be the quickest on the qualifying because at the qualifying, it's really up to the driver, you know. It really shows who is the quickest, who is the quickest driver of the yeah. field, you know. And, you know, all of the best drivers are there, and it's just up to the driver, you know. The, the track is one of the the most complicated and difficult in the world. So, like I said before, it's really up to the driver. So, my goal was just to go down, to go to Macau, take the pole position, and then we know that everything could happen in the race, which it did. Yeah. Um, so, um, I have to say, I put I put the, the pole position quite high in my in my statics or. Yeah, the highlights, I have to say. Was it a hard decision to choose uh, DTM over Formula 2? I mean, it's great to obviously make a career out of, uh, you know, something like DTM. Yeah. Like Formula 2 is so... Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, the decision was actually not too difficult for me. Uh, I mean, the, the relationship to BMW has, since the start, been really, really good. You know, everything has been working perfectly from the beginning. And then I asked, then I asked thought, why should I do anything else when, when I think it's working so, so well and so good? And I mean, BMW is, uh, we are all a big family, you know, and since the first day I felt so, so welcomed by everyone. Um, so um, I just thought, why should I leave something which is really, really good and the feeling was really on the top. So I didn't really want to take the risk to, to have a, like, a, like a dip yeah. or like a broke down, like if I went to F2. Keep the momentum going. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to keep yeah. the momentum up and yeah. just continue, you know. So um, it, it, for sure... It was not super easy, it was not, but no. at the same point it was quite easy, you know, when you were looking at it with a completely open yeah. ha open arms, you know, and open eyes and yeah. everything, it was, then it was quite easy. So, growing up, obviously I've been racing on like, games, for example, I guess you as well with similar sort of age. Yeah. Um, when going to like a, a new track, for example, do you spend a lot of time practicing? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I always flying out like on, at the, at the weekend we have the race. Mm -hmm. I always fly out on like Tuesday evening. I fly to the team, and then we start starting uh, with the preparations uh, directly on the Wednesday morning, and we do like a full half day uh, just in the simulator, just sitting in the simulator, driving the track mm -hmm. which we are going to. Uh, so we are for sure spending a lot of time, you know, just to be, make sure that you know that the mindset and the head is already at the track when I'm coming down here so I already have the references and like the you know the view around the track and everything so um, yeah we were spending some time on the simulator I have to say. Did you ever play like games growing up and was that something that kept you going in a way? Uh, not really I have to oh, say, okay. not okay. really so yeah. Okay um, my next question was like lifestyle and fitness obviously a big part of you know, being a professional racing driver, do you yeah. spend a lot of time with personal trainers, you know, getting your fitness at the right point for each part of the season? Uh, actually, I don't really have a personal trainer at home or, or something like that. Mm. Uh, but we do have the formula medicine as a, as a backup uh, for all the BMW drivers, which is really, really good for us. Uh, we have the opportunity to go whenever we want to the to the fitness camp in, in Italy. Yeah. And... Um, we had a we had actually a big fitness camp in this in the beginning of this year, um, so we were there for like one week in Italy and training, mm -hmm. and then they also gave us a personal programs uh, because they could see all the weakness on each person, and this is actually really good because then I can go home and just work on the things that I have to improve. Um, so I felt like I don't need really I don't really need a personal trainer at home because I already know my weaknesses. Um, and I got us all the support from BMW, so um, yeah, everything was working out in that way. So. so for me, trying to get into a car myself, uh, was there one thing you'd recommend in terms of fitness? Is there one thing that I should definitely work on before getting in a car? Uh, it's a difficult question. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a bit different if you're running in a single seater uh, or in a GT car. Uh, because now, when I went to DTM, I found out that the... Like I had to focus more on the running, you know, uh, for the condition, yeah. uh, because it's getting so hot in the car all the time, so you really need to, to stay focused all the time. Like in a single seat, you're getting fresh air all the time, you know, and it's sitting completely mm, open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so everything is really different. Um, so it depends on <laughs> what series yeah. you you should go to. Yeah. Okay.
I'll, I'll just try and work on everything. I think, yeah. I think that might be important. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know you're quite you know young into your career. Is there a drive? Uh, sorry, a car that you sort of stands out for you? One that you enjoy driving the most? Uh, I have to say the DTM and F3 car is uh, the best cars until yeah. now. It's also the quickest cars I've tried <laughs> through the yeah. career. Yeah. So uh, I didn't try out so many cars until now, but. Uh, for sure, the DTM and F3 is the, the best so far. Yeah. Uh, one last question then for maybe young drivers coming through. Um, is there a way you sort of recommend them breaking into the sport or is it going to always be hard with the sponsorship and money issues? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I always had a, the same thought in my head was like, never give up. Mm. You always have a dream in your head and you, the only thing you can do is just to put all the effort you, you have and then like, yeah, just never give up, you know, because Everything is possible only if you want. Only if you want it, you know. Some some people are more lucky than others, but if you really really fight for it and you're really working for it, then uh, it is possible for sure. Well, great, thank you for taking your time for doing this video. Thank you. No